we want to see the kingdom of God grow, we need to get back to doing the good work that God called us to. Let's, one more scripture and I close. Titus chapter 2. <laughs> Titus chapter 2. Starting in verse 11. And once again, we're going to see 11 and 12 is where the conduct is. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, says this. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Conduct. The way we live. Waiting for our blessed hope. And I love the Bible's hope so much more than the English word hope. Because this is not our wish that Jesus is going to return. This is concrete. This is concrete. Understand that. This is a definite. It's going to happen, this hope that we have. He says, uh, uh, verse 13, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself. Wait. To purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. It says he came to rescue us, to cleanse us from sin, to deliver us from the power of sin, to redeem for himself a people, to make us his own people that would be excited, that would be on fire to do good works. Not to build our kingdom. Not to gain more power, more influence over people, but to do good works. And by the conduct and letting our light shine, we gain favor with man. And God draws people to his body. So why did I go to Africa? Because that's what we saw in action. And so it was important to bring the rest of our trainers to see what was happening so they could go back home to their own countries and do the same thing. But guess what? I'm one of the trainers that had to show up and learn it too. I've got to bring it back to the States. I've got to bring it back to PA. I've got to bring it back to New Ken and Arnold and work that thing out here. If you think good works aren't important, I would challenge you, and you don't have to go there, but I would challenge you to read Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. And I'm going to tell you just real quick a little bit about it. This is where it talks about the final judgment and the sheep and the goats. And what you have is Jesus saying this to his sheep. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. He didn't say you was in church every Sunday. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Right? Right? I say you made it to every single Bible study. You had perfect attendance. He didn't say that. When I was in prison, you visited me. Right? This is, this is what he lays out. And, and they're like, well, what are you talking about, Jesus? When, when, when did we do these things? And he says, if you did it for the least of one of these, my brothers, you've done it for me. See, getting back to the good works, yo, this stuff ain't that hard. We don't have to get super deep and bogged down in a bunch of theology and talking about, you know, genealogy. You could keep that. Let's just do the book. Right? Let's get back to that. And, and here's what we see when we work together. If we get unified on a common purpose, on a common vision, what is it that we can't do? I saw people with nothing. I drove over the bridge. A little nervous, but I drove over that joint. I seen it with my own eyes. I, I, I seen it from the beginning of the work. And what God will do. You know, when I went, when I went and um, 
and I talked with them. My encouragement to them, I believe it's Romans uh, 8.31. I think it's 8.31 or 32. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, my gosh. If we come together on one accord for the obedience of God, not for the disobedience to build our own kingdom, but for the obedience of God to do these good works that he's called us to do, that he's spelled out in the book, we get back to doing that, you'll see the church grow. 